Well, we are back. We're back at the Nine Club, everybody. <laughs> T- today, uh, why do you guys laugh, man? Come on, uh, it's entertaining. Can I do my intro? <laughs> yeah, it's good. Uh, we got a special guest today. Hell yeah, Mr. Mark McKee is here. Thanks. Yeah, <laughs> thanks for having me on. <laughs> if you skated in the '90s, you most likely have ridden his graphics. That he's drawn. That he's drawn. Yeah. Safe to say, Mark? I guess so. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> no, but you've done so many iconic board graphics. We'll, we'll get into all the board graphics and stuff. I mean, crazy, crazy shit you've done. You know, it's insane. I mean, just looking around at our set here. I mean, Gabriel <laughs> yeah. Rodriguez, uh, the Nottis graphic, the, the 101. Uh, crazy. We'll get into all that, but uh, crazy, dude. Crazy. Good. Thanks for coming. Oh, you're welcome. It was a five dollar and seventy cents uh, Uber. Five dollars and seventy cents. Okay, <laughs> Raj, Raj will pay you back. Yeah, Raj will pay he, you back. He literally lives like two blocks away. Oh, he does. Yeah, okay. I, I would have walked here. I started. I stepped outside my door with the the board box, and I yeah. walked about fifty feet. And I'm like, fuck this. I'm not going to walk all the way over there. It would have taken eight minutes, but it's an eight, eight minute walk. <laughs> yeah, but there's okay. a lot of stuff in that box too. Yeah. So yeah, yeah. and I wouldn't want to drop it. But even carrying, how many boards did you bring? Like seven or eight boards? I mean, yeah. And the boards from the 90s, they're, they're massive. They're, they're, yeah, they're, they're, they're It's a lot of wood. It's a lot of wood. And it was like a box that was super old. <laughs> yeah, it's like torn, can it fall apart. I know. <laughs> old World Industries box. Remember, what, 20 years old, that box? Yeah, I think so. Survive. Wow. wow. So let's go, let's let's dive right into it, man. What, um, where you, where'd you grow up? Uh, Marin County, Northern California. Northern California. Yeah, San Rafael. Oh, okay, cool. And were you, were you, uh. Were you drawing your whole life? I was pretty much, yeah. yeah. My mom saved my, my drawings from like preschool and, you know, grade school. And no they're, way. Pretty, wow. they're pretty funny. Just, I mean, my mom saved them too, but I mean, yeah. they're probably <laughs> shit compared to what you were doing, you know? <laughs> um, so, I mean, when you were growing up, were, were, you, were you skating as well? Were you doing that whole thing? Or I skated really early on and then they quickly transitioned into riding BMX bikes. Oh, but I skated like I had a half pipe in my backyard and you know, I'd pump the ramp. My first board was this, it was a bonsai board. Mm-hmm. And I've even looked for it online and it must be like hard to come by these days. It was like a, um, a, like a laminate core, like a wood core, it must've been maple or something. And okay. then, it, then it had like a uh, plexiglass on, on the top and bottom. Weird. Oh, wow. Yeah, it was like orange plexiglass on the top and yellow and black on the bottom. And the name of the board was called the Bonsai Rim Rider. The Bonsai <laughs> Rim Rider. Whoa. Whoa. Was that a was that a regular board or was that like a Walmart? I don't I'm not familiar with that one. I bought it, it in a bike shop, but the, oh. yeah, that was um like, you know, people would probably be skating pools with that board yeah. back okay, then. Okay, got yeah. you. Yeah. Yep. I mean, maybe slalom style pools, not vert, vert, vert no. riding, because it was like a flexi board. And so BMX, you kind of got into BMX riding. Yeah, it was really popular in Northern California for sure. Were you good, like tail um, whips and shit, or? <laughs> yeah, I, I could do like the tricks. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Tabletops, you jumping over, you doing the well, whole thing. The thing was like I had the half pipe in my backyard. Okay. And I'd skate it. But then we had this fucking like shut-in lady that lived directly next door who was there 24-7 and she's like, it, the skateboarding is too loud. Uh, of course. <laughs> so then just being a little kid, you know, like 13 years old, I like, okay, I'll just ride my, I'll ride, just ride my bike on it instead. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's a bummer, man. I wish I would have known about, uh, there's this way of laying down the masonite diagonally uh-huh. so the wheels don't like hit, sink into the gaps. Like, cause when you're just pumping on a, like a regular ramp with the, you know, perpendicular laid um, plies or right. masonite, it's like, yeah, yeah. But even still like the board hitting the coping and everything, I mean, it's still a loud, it's still a loud thing. You like fully noise proof it. I know. Like put carpet underneath it. Carpet. I did that. Yeah. I tried that. Oh, you did? Wow. Oh. And close the whole, like, you know, the structure. Right. The, the giant, giant, giant speaker. I moved it to the far side of the backyard, made, made a different one. Oh, you did? Fully, and she could still hear it. It was a, like there was another guy that like was in the neighborhood. This guy, Greg Otanis, mm-hmm. and he had an even bigger ramp. It was like sixteen feet wide, you know, nine feet tall, maybe. And uh, yeah, he was like there was in the papers back then. Like it was a big deal. Like neighbors like thought it would like really destroy your property yeah. value and shit like that. Oh yeah. So his it's an shit, eyesore for his some shit had to get torn down too. Oh really? Oh yeah. Oh jeez. So you're you're growing up. You're 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 doing the you're doing art as well as as yeah. BMXing and everything. Yeah, I was really into art all through high school, mm-hmm. and then I eventually um, uh, went to college for art. Oh, where did you go to school? UCLA. Oh, you went to oh, UCLA. Wow. Yeah, oh, Bruin. Yeah. 
you go to the basketball game? <laughs> yeah. the thing? You were, were you a no. hardcore? No. Yeah. <laughs> I don't have any school spirit. No school spirit. No. Yeah, neither did I, man, in high school. It's yeah. a good school to skate, though. Hell yeah. Hell yeah, because yeah. it's good spots. Yeah. yeah, the brick ledges or something. Yeah, I had a couple clips in UCLA. Yeah. yeah. When you're going to school for art, you know, what does that entail? What are you, what are you, what are you like, working on? Are they saying, like, draw this bowl of fruit? From different um, perspectives, or how did how did this, yeah they, nudes? That, yeah, <laughs> what are you, yeah, yeah. you drawing? Well, my major was design, mm. but then also within the College of Fine Arts, there there's uh, um, a degree in this fine art. So oh. fine art is more like you drawing nudes and shit like that. Yeah. But mine was more like it's called design, so it's like more like interior industrial design and like architecture. Oh, and then some drawing. Oh, okay, architecture hmm. like 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 build like you're like designing a like uh, famous architects house? well you're not designing it but you're just more learning like um what's gone down like you learn about architects from the past and so like historical uh, so you're not learning like structural no. stability you're learning just lines and stuff like that i don't know i'm not an uh, i can draw stick figures okay, yeah, you're not architects. you're not learning how to be an architect uh -huh. but you're just learning about you know the field of architecture and like you know what building styles have been coming down through the past and oh, just to save a knowledge of like what's the difference between modernism and um gothic architecture or some shit oh, like that okay oh. and do you think that do you think the school helped you personally? it didn't help me become a better artist i don't think because okay. i think that's kind of inborn yeah i was gonna say but it it helps like kind of discipline you to where you have to finish a project in time oh <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah but you were probably used to that with i mean doing world and all this all these graphics well and stuff. I, I was in college for um three years before i started at world oh you were yeah oh uh, you started so like that, yeah, a bmx company right yeah the bmx company was called bully bikes bully bikes and that's how i met uh steve rocco and rodney mullen because they were his tenants this guy that well the guy that owned bully bikes his name was rl Os osborne okay and uh he was like one of the top pros throughout the 80s oh wow so you know he's one of the few like bmx riders that could afford a house in hermosa beach right. and ran out the rooms to like rodney and steve rocco oh. <laughs> no way and like you guys were talking to spike and mm -hmm. like spike was saying he was working for uh freestyle magazine mm -hmm. so rl osborne the owner of bully bikes that his dad was bob osborne oh, okay. who published That's... the magazine wow. and his sister was wendy osborne who was the photographer that you know showed the ropes to spike a bit Wow. wow. That's <laughs> so fucking crazy. It's, it's a small yeah. world. It's nuts, yeah. So it's funny because they, they were, Rocco and Rodney were the guy's tenants? Yeah, because like yeah. Rocco and Rodney, they had just started World Industries up and probably had no money at all and right. <laughs> had to rent rooms from this yeah. guy. And then they stole you. Uh, yeah, from him, yeah. Yeah. Because <laughs> <laughs> yeah. RL was like, because I was working for pretty cheap back then, okay. and RL, RL was like telling Rocco like, he works for really cheap like oh really yeah. Yeah. he almost kind of like handed him over handed him over yeah handed yeah. you handed you over to him well rl ended up well, i think he did the bike company for a few more years but then he sold it he oh, sold he the brand so he discontinued it oh okay or he he stepped stepped out right 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 and there's not that much uh, graphic work that you can do for a bike company yeah you just do like a sticker for the yeah did stickers a yeah. couple t-shirts yeah. um an ad interesting a skateboard is like the perfect canvas it, <laughs> it is right yeah. Yeah. that but, or a snowboard yeah but let me ask you a question but, though i mean saying that it's the perfect canvas i mean you're you're talking about like a, a rectangle box almost well sometimes I mean? like, it's, a little, it's a little awkward to work within the um what aspect ratio or whatever yeah yeah <laughs> the yeah. board um but the fact that like part of skateboarding like grinds off the graphics and then you want to get a new graphic yeah. you don't want to stick with the same one so it's just it's i think a lot of artists like can work within skateboarding rather than other fields you know yeah yeah, yeah but i mean like like drawing inside of a rectangle box is that limiting to you or you just kind of use the canvas as what it is, you know? Well, now I'm used to it. Like I was yeah. working a little bit on this um, like album cover art and I was like, wow, it's a square. It's, it's a like, what do I do with this? <laughs> yeah, there's so much space, right? Well, let's go back to the BMX thing. So you were, uh, how long did that last? That was uh, 88 till about maybe 1989. And like I started the first graphic I did at World Industries was um, the Valley Barnyard. And that was in... Uh, spring of 1989 how long does it take you to do what, like your first graphic like that that one like i was going to school at the same time mm -hmm. so sometimes like i would set, set my classes up to be like tuesday and thursdays only and then the rest of the week i'd go down to world oh. and uh so it took probably about three weeks to finish that graphic oh, okay. when you're doing that graphic did they originally want it on that shape yeah that's the good thing about then because like they would give you the shape oh, really? so you wouldn't have to draw a 
outside where the actual graphics is going to go. That yeah. was a real pain in the ass with like when slick bottoms came along. Mm -hmm. Because like a slick bottom, yeah, when they lay over. the ply on, they can't position it perfectly. So you'd have to draw this excess of graphic that you know is just going to get cut off. <laughs> mm -hmm. Wait, so you would actually, they would give you the board template and you would draw yeah, inside that board shape. The exact shape with wow. where the truck holes are going to be. Really? Hmm. I feel like now they just, they, they did draw on a square, right? Or Pretty a rectangle. Much, yeah. yeah. And what you're saying is that the... Well, the shapes are all pretty uniform these days. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And it's like, if it's a wider shape, you could just like scale the graphic up on the computer. <laughs> yeah. yeah, but that's an interesting thing too, because back then they were just silk screening boards, right? Yeah. There wasn't any, so they, you kind of had to do the whole shape thing, you know? I don't know. I don't know too much about this world. It was, it was just basically an advantage to know the shape ahead of time. So yeah. you didn't have to do extra work. Okay. Yeah. But what about like, you know... Um, did you have to think about colors? Like how many, like not, not to use too many colors because of yeah, the silk it's costly. <laughs> yeah, that's what I'm saying, yeah. Um, well, the way that sil the silk screen process works mm -hmm. is um, every color is a separate silk screen. Yeah. Um, so if you have like, and then if you have to, you have to burn the screen to, to imprint the, um, the stencil area where the images, the ink's gonna go through. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So if you have like eight colors, which is a lot for silk screening, um, then you have eight separate like screening stations. So, yeah. you, you know, you put the board down in, into the, um, whatever it's called, and then yeah, yeah. you pull the, the ink through the screen and then you have to physically take it out and transfer it to another station. Right. And that's time consuming. And yeah. set up fees and everything, yeah. Yeah. So you would have to, like, what would you try to stay within? Like four colors or something? A four would be really difficult. Oh. Um, Cause I think also um, from like Santa Cruz graphics, like it was, popular in vision graphics too to have like really brightly colored boards back then with yeah. a lot of colors yeah. so we would do a probably on average like seven or eight colors for every board so like, maybe not every board but like eight would be probably the limit back then yeah what was the most colors you ever had on a board i think 13 but that wasn't until we did the last supper board with cliche like oh, yeah. very recently okay that's what this is right here yeah and is that silk screened yeah that one is. oh it is what's i'm sorry what's the difference between is it just the, like you just described putting different layers on like that compared to what's the other way they do it? Heat transfers? Heat transfer? Yeah. And that's just one thing you just put on top and screen on it, right? The heat transfer is like it's a, they put, it's kind of the same process. They they screen all the colors onto like a, a film, like a plastic film. Okay. And it's like all, I think it's like reversed, right? I think so. I, yeah. I'm not sure. And then like they basically layer it all up and then like, then just send it through like um, then pressure, it's like pressure rollers. Yeah, it turns into like an iron-on. Yeah. Uh, okay. Mm -hmm. okay. But the problem with the heat transfer stuff is like they don't stand the test of time. You know? What, what do you... They'll fade, they oh, chip. Okay, like, okay, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Like silk screen boards is, you know, it's going to last a lot longer. Yeah. So when you got hired with World, did you know this whole process or did you have to get used to like drawing on boards and, and different things and the colors and all this stuff? Or? Yeah, I didn't know the process. Rocco's like, yeah, here's just, they had these uh, films that you'd have to cut with a razor blade to like the cut Ruby out. Lith? Yeah, Ruby Lith. And so you'd have, and that's what they would use to put on the silk screen. And then the silk screen has an emulsion on it to where like when you expose it to light, the stencil that you cut out with the ruby lith like makes some part of the um, emulsion stay, and some parts have um, you could the ink can go through the, the silk screen mesh. Yeah. yeah, right. Yeah, right. So right. Rocco's like, yeah, I'll show you. Just use this shit, this uh, ruby lith stuff, and then it's easy. You, you'll be able to do it. Oh yeah. yeah. Were, so were you, you cutting all the uh, the graphics out by hand then? Like, yeah. Exactly. Oh my gosh. Yeah, they have like you know you use like an exacto knife with mm -hmm. like a razor blade tip, and then. Uh, Rodney was always so like, like, all right, I have to do all the pink now. And yeah. Yeah. And you, you look at the colored um, drawing that you did with like magic markers mm -hmm. that's full color. And then you, you see like, okay, in this area, yeah, you know, it's pink. And then yeah. <laughs> you cut it out. You cut it out. And you peel it away. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I always thought like, this isn't such like a good like work environment where it's like this tedious work. And then you're surrounded by these knives and razor yeah. blades you're working with <laughs> yeah. all day. Was that affecting your art when you're like thinking like yeah oh, i have to do, do this in a certain way because mm -hmm. i gotta cut this damn thing out yeah you yeah. gotta think in layers almost like photoshop right. yeah you're drawing in layers and right? you can't yeah and you can't have any well you you can there's a way but it's very difficult but you can't generally have like grad gradations of color and like fades and stuff like right. that mm -hmm. um there is a way of getting fades, but that that's just like smearing different inks on the on the actual silk screen. screen yeah. yeah, and that's um, a whole different art in itself. Yeah, yeah. The silk screen. A lot of Alva boards were like that. Jeez, what a process! I didn't even know. You know what I mean? Like a crazy. So like this. Okay, so like behind you, the yeah. bear with the pitchfork. 
Now, are you, you're cutting that bear out in... in yeah, what, what you do first is you draw only the black line on like a white piece of cardboard or paper. Okay. Then you take a photograph of that and then what you get is this called a film positive where it's basically the black line drawing on a piece of clear, you know, photographic film. Okay. And then you take that piece like of film. It's a transparency. It's a transparency yeah. with the black line of the artwork. And you take that and you put it on a light table, which is like, you know, a table with a glass top that mm. lights up so it, um, you can trace stuff on it. Okay. And then you put the ruby lift. <laughs> Ruby lift. I don't even think they manufacture it anymore. But it's like it's like this ruby colored translucent uh, film. Okay. And then it's it's based. It has a base that, that's clear plastic. So if you incise into just the orange ruby lift part and make you know the cuts where they need to be, then you can peel away the areas <laughs> that you need to peel away. <laughs> it's like plexiglass with like a red like. Red uh, film on, on top, top yeah. yeah. How long would this process take then? Because you got to take, you got to draw the outline, take the photo of it, get that printed in the ruby lith thing yeah. or whatever. I mean, that, uh, well, the drawing takes the longest amount of time, yeah. um, but the actual like this process of you know using the ruby lith and making the separations they're called because mm -hmm. you're separating each color into a separate film. Yeah. Um, you know, that could take a couple of days. Did you like that process? I feel like an artist, they want to just do their thing. I mean, this is a whole different style. Yeah, well, I don't... You need to have someone, hire someone for that. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I think they would do that sometimes. Yeah. Oh, they would, okay. But I enjoyed kind of the tedium of that too. And, mm. you know, you, I'm as an artist, like, you're not constantly, like, creating. <laughs> like, there's good to have some downtime where yeah. you're just listening to music and just, like, it's, you know, tracing this thing out, basically. Right, right. You were doing a lot of graphics. And were they were, were you getting overloaded with work? Uh, not really. That no. was the great thing about back then. I mean, mm. at a certain point, but that, this was much later on. Okay. But back when I when we first started, at, like at World, like Rocco was just like letting us take as much time as we needed to, and mm. then uh, working just for an hourly rate. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah. So, oh, damn. so some of the boards that me and Sean ended up like invoicing for was like we would just give the invoices to the accountant and not give them directly to Steve. <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Why were you doing that? Were you were you were you beefing up the invoice a little bit? No, no. Uh, no. <laughs> it just took that long to do a graphic. Oh. It took like up to 2 to 3 weeks yeah. and that's like like 80 hours. Huh? Yeah. How much are you invoicing them back then at that time? Like what's one graphic? I mean, the Well, the Valley Barnyard and I ended up getting 640 bucks. 640 bucks. Which was pretty good back then. Yeah. And then it got a little bit higher for some of the more complicated boards later. Yeah, I bet. That board was, that graphic was like remade a couple of times. Like do you end up getting uh Residuals? any sort of like royalties or anything from that? No. No? Cuz I like didn't like after he left like he ended up on Powell. Powell, Powell even made it. Yeah, I was gonna say yeah. like Powell made it. And but we ripped off Powell too. So. Yeah. So, so I actually asked yeah, so like later on. Is, yeah. There's that whole weird beef thing. But no, I think it's good. Um, Did you ever get like a, uh, a check for that though? No. No. I got a good lawyer. I just don't don't want to hate on any like fans of the art. You know. Like, yeah. <laughs> so you're working for World. Because Spike was telling stories about World. Yeah, a lot were of them you, crossed over where I, I was present at what he was describing. Were Steal, you, stealing the bus stop posters. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, you were you were you walked in and they were there. The bus stop posters. No, I helped them steal them. Oh, you were. Really? <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. You were not us. <laughs> That's amazing. Were you there for the firing of all the people? I might have been in that school early? that day. Oh, okay, good. <laughs> I don't know. Good. I was not present. I mean, it must have been a fun work environment. I'd imagine it'd be fun as fuck. Because that dude's insane. In a good way. Yeah. <laughs> in a good way, you know. Well, the whole credit card thing where he would just give you his, his credit card and he yeah. actually like showed me how to forge his signature so I could write checks. <laughs> no, who yeah, are you writing uh, checks to? I don't really remember, but like, you know, something, if I had to sign a signature for something, like he's like, this is how you do it. No way. Wow. Think you could do it today? He's an artist, of course. I remember, how, I remember <laughs> how it looks, but I don't think I would be able to do it. Yeah. <laughs> When you're in the height of all this world blind, you know, all this stuff and you, cause you're doing like crazy graphics, you're doing like Javante's like napping Negro, yeah. right. And all this stuff, like, is there, and, and are they bringing you these ideas and are like, or are you coming up with a lot of them yourself? Well, are you saying like, I can't do this. This well, for, is crazy. For that graphic. Um, well, what happens, I think a lot of the times is they'd come to me with an idea and then I would kind of like add my own thing to it okay. like maybe make it worse <laughs> oh, <yeah. laughs> or more offensive <laughs> oh, wow okay like with Javante's I remember his mom like you know there's this whole world of like um, black collectibles mm -hmm. and uh, even though it's like racist shit like you know 
his mom brought in this postcard that um, was a picture of like a little black boy in a in a watermelon patch, and he's urinating, mm. and it you know it's supposed to be adorable, but it's totally racist. And uh-huh. it's like the fountain of youth. It says is the caption. Okay. And so instead of just doing because I don't really really like just copying something exactly right. um, and using that as a graphic. So I'm like, okay, well, we'll just uh, do something along those lines. Okay. So that Javante board is like set up as though um, it's a collectible for racists mm. that are like looking back fondly on those, you know, that era. Right. And then like, I, I was really uncomfortable, like kind of when that board would get displayed without also showing the, the ad that ran with it in Thrasher. Because oh. there was a, a, a full page ad in Thrasher um, you know, setting it up as like a mail order item mm. to where like, hey, if you're if you miss the good old days, like here's this um, painting that you can order from the World Industries Mint. Okay. Yeah. Where I got that, like the whole mint aspect was, of it was um, uh, when I was a kid, like on daytime TV, like in the 70s and 80s, they'd have this commercial for this this mail order chess set. Okay. And it was made manufactured by this company called the Franklin Mint. Mm-hmm. I've heard of that. Yeah. And. Uh, so it's like they're advertising this, you know, finely hand, finely carved uh, Civil War chess set, where it's like, do you want to, yeah, do you yeah. want to be on the side of the slaveholders or yeah. the North? <laughs> right. <laughs> so you were uncomfortable with that board being displayed, like you said, like you were. Just... Well, I would have it displayed, but like, like it was in a show in Paris that was like maybe ten years ago, and mm-hmm. I, I, like the curator only wanted to show boards. I'm like, hey, you got to show the ad too, so people can read the ad and see that it's sarcastic. Like it's just sarcasm, you know. Yeah. It's not like, yeah. So they can get the joke. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And but but Javante came to you with that graphic. Yeah. And, and he was happy with it. He was he was happy. Yeah. Did you do uh, Javante at night too? That was his idea. Right. Yeah. yeah. You did that one. Yeah, and I think that he may have said that that was his first board, but it wasn't his first board. But anyway. Because um, the the at night um, the eyes and the the smile were taken from the top graphic of the napping negro board. Mm. Oh, mm-hmm. that's right. Oh, that was on that was the top graphic. Well, the top graphic wasn't the the it black just had and white face. It was the full. It was a full color picture of the face. Yeah. So Javante said for his next board, or he wanted the Javante at night, where just just the eyes and teeth and all not, black. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but is there anything that these guys are coming at you and you're just like, whoa, dude? Like because a lot of those graphics were were pretty. Uh, yeah. yeah, I'd imagine you pitch people with some crazy ideas and like. Or I just wouldn't even tell them, like you know, like that Jordan Richter board. I just yeah. found a, a, a safe sex pamphlet at, at UCLA. Like you know, there there people are handing out, or it's in the men's room or something. Right, right. I'm like, look, it's sa- shaped perfectly like a board. <laughs> Here's a <your> graphic. <laughs> yeah, that, that's a graphic though. The Jordan Richter, like how, that that didn't take you too long to do, right? No, that's just a matter of um, making a Xerox copy, basically. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> well, because you, I would always hear from people saying like, "Oh yeah, I gave McKee this idea." And he fucking whips it up in like a day or like hours or something. Like you're pretty yeah, quick. Yeah, that wouldn't be a finished graphic. That would be just like a yeah. sketch of it or something. But still, I mean, even those sketches, I believe, could go on a skateboard, Mark. You know, they can even go on a mug. Will you draw us right now? <laughs> would, you, would you draw me if I? How long would it take you to sketch a caricature? Um, well, I don't want to do that right now. <laughs> <laughs> we'll pause the show. You know? we'll, we'll, we'll get a little art. art t- I'll draw too. I'll draw. I'll draw Kelly. That'd be weird to do that while doing it, like just talking. I know. Um, but um, no. But see, but you, 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 you tend to whip up things pretty quickly. Is that? Is that? In the to past, say? I slowed down considerably oh, really? more recently. Yeah. Why? Why is that? Just wanting to get maybe like having less ideas now. Okay. <laughs> and uh, just wanting to be more of a perfectionist about things. Yeah. Since yeah. Do you have a favorite board that you did? Uh, yeah, um, the ones that I brought in there, um, Ben are, Kelly, uh, like the uh, the Gabe, Nottis, uh Devil Board, the Nottis mm-hmm. Devil Board, yeah, the Gabriel Rodriguez Jesus, yeah, board. and the Jason Lee. I call it the American Icons with the flag in the background. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Those are up. Those are some of my favorites. How many boards did they make back then? Like, what would be the run? I don't remember. Really? Right? Yeah, I don't know. I didn't really pay attention. Like, I'm all surprised to hear like how many like barnyards sold because I, I don't really remember them selling that many. But I guess okay. they must have. How many? What do you mean? Did they sell a lot? Back? Yeah, because hasn't like Mike like you know gone on record saying he was making like twelve grand a month for a while or something oh, yeah, like that? Maybe. So that would have yeah. been um, six thousand boards a month. Wow. <laughs> I know that me and every one of my friends had that board. Did you save all your boards? Yeah, for the first. 10 or so years I saved pretty much all of them. Oh, really? Yeah. yeah. After 10 years, you, you kind of stopped? I mean... Well, then I would be more sporadic. I'd save uh, some and then not save others. Maybe the ones that you really liked. Or that something. was when the quantity of my artwork really out overtook the quality. Oh. 
That was when skateboarding became popular again, so they needed like way, way more graphics. Right. And they just started pumping things out. Mm-hmm. So you're working for Rocco and everything's good? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> How old were you when you got hired? Just turned 20. You said you were freelance at first? Yeah, I was freelance. Um, I guess it must have been like maybe 92 or 93. I think I started having the regular pay salary. Oh, wow. Which did you like better? Oh, definitely having, getting a salary. Yeah. Yeah. Because then you could just chill. Chill. But actually I'm, the freelance was fine at first, like, because it was pretty much like whatever I would draw, you know, we would use and mm-hmm. I would get paid for. It wasn't like... Um, drawing something on spec to where, like, you know, you wouldn't get your ideas used. Mm-hmm. So you're the only artist down there. They have to have other, yeah. They have to have more. Artists. I was one of the only artists at World at the, in the beginning, or you know, the only one in house. And then I think in '91, um, Rocco uh, brought on Sean, Cli- Sean Cliver from uh, Powell. Well, yeah, I mean, he took him from Powell, right? Yeah. And well, Powell fired him. So oh, Powell <laughs> right. fired yeah. him. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> so then, uh, you know, uh, Steve extended the invitation to come over to World. Right. Right. Well, because there was that whole thing, right, where you guys took Powell Graphics. Yeah. And then that was while pa- while Sean was at Powell. Yeah, he, well, while he was yeah. at Powell, right? They weren't his graphics that we took, but like he was yeah. at Powell at the time. But then he didn't. He try to do some other like board graphic in response to that. Yeah, he did. He did. Um, it was, I guess the Blind Ripper. I guess you could call it Blind Stick, whatever. Yeah, it was like the Ripper graphic from Powell, but with a with blind glasses and a blind cane, like because <laughs> Blind was the company that that ripped off the Powell graphics. That gotcha. you know, Blind okay. was our company. Yeah. Right. When Cliver came on board, were you nervous? I was a little bit, yeah. I, mean, I, I felt imagine. like I could get complacent being the only person there. So yeah, I thought that was very like smart on Steve's part, you know, to to do that. Oh, really? Yeah. So that. He just gave you a little competition. Yeah. You had to feel threatened a little bit. Like, they, whoa, this that guy's coming. He's a fucking great artist. Yeah. This dude. Well, not in terms of I'm going to lose my job, but just oh. in terms of like, uh, you know, I better not just half-ass anything. Yeah. Oh, made you step your game up more. You know, stay at a certain level, I guess. Okay. <laughs> right. Not slack off. Yeah. <laughs> Which I did later. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, did you? Yeah. <laughs> But I mean, I, I could imagine that you guys still had, you know, graphics and deadlines and all this stuff. We like didn't really have deadlines. No deadlines. No. But they, they needed to come out with boards, though. And then they have certain that drops. Didn't, that and, didn't really happen until no. maybe like 94, around that time. Then we, we had like, then Steve was done like being so hands-on with the company. He brought on other managers that would, you know, have sales projections and like you'd get a line sheet like, like okay. Like mess them? Yeah. Yeah. Were you saying well, you, got a, you got a line sheet of what? Um, you know, excuse to th- fill? This, yeah, there's so many uh, um, stock keeping units to fill. Mm-hmm. Like, Did you like that? No. I could imagine <laughs> not, right? I mean, but you, this... And even this, and then that was at the time when, when these other managers came on where actually got taken off salary because the number crunchers, uh, you know, told Steve like, okay, the graphic takes, uh, you know, 30 hours to make. This is the hourly rate. We're, we can't pay this much per graphic. So... Gra- graphics can only cost like we can only pay the artists like 600 500 bucks a graphic really wow did you talk to steve and be like what the fuck man i didn't talk to steve i mean there was no two ways around it no and it, it's a lucky position to be in any way as a working artist yeah. mm. and so what i my what i resolved to do was just okay well i'm just gonna have to draw more simplistic graphics now oh really right. yeah or what about maybe more graphics well they have to get they paid have, more. They have to be more simplistic to, 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 do, to do more. Right, right. <laughs> and I'm not going to just, and you know, they're not going to pay for like, you know, this sketch on a napkin and like build them for that. So I would try. Yeah. <laughs> I, would, I, would, I would try. I would try that. <laughs> but, um, but I mean, like for an instance, like the, the Nautis 101 graphic, right? Mm-hmm. Which was supposed to be Jason Lee's board, right? Uh, yeah. There's a nice story behind that, mm-hmm. right, Raj? Yeah. I can tell it again if you want. That'd be amazing. <laughs> Please yeah. do. Please. Yeah. Okay. Well, the, the Nautis one with the uh, satanic imagery on it mm-hmm. originally was originally instead of saying 101 Nautis, it said Jason Lee and then Lee and where the 101 numbers are. Mm-hmm. Okay. And uh, it was because uh, like Jason didn't want it. Like no. I just drew it and I put his name on it, thinking that you know maybe he would use it. Okay. But the reason why I thought that he would use it was because he wanted a Bella Lugosi like Dracula graphic. Oh. And which Mark's Mark Gonzalez's cousin drew up for him. Okay. Uh his cousin was Ernie Mendoza, another artist. Mm-hmm. Um so he drew this graphic up for Jason and and Steve did not like it. Like Rocco did not want to use it. Rocco didn't want to use it. He didn't want to use the Dracula graphic at all. Oh. Uh, yeah. It looked like a Bella Lugosi era, like, you know, 30s horror flick, like a, okay. g- a guy in a um, tuxedo, mm-hmm. that old school Dracula. 
Um, and I think what Jason was after wasn't really that anyway. I think he wanted more like he was listening to the Bauhaus and they have that song Bella Lugosi's Dead, like some more, something more goth. Okay. Yeah. But he didn't want anything satanic. Yeah. <laughs> but I yeah. wanted to do it anyway. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> so then there was this big debacle where it's like Mark Gonzalez is telling Jason, like, you shouldn't take that graphic. And he was already not ready to take it anyway. Wow. But then Steve. <laughs> um, Were you listening to Slayer at the time? Oh yeah, big time. It's highly influenced by the cover art from Rain and Blood, like the, oh. the hanged priests. <laughs> like, oh, yeah. I think they have okay. some of those on that album cover. So then Steve just like uh, maybe just to fuck with Jason. He's like, okay, I'll, I'll, how much do you want for it? I'm going to write you a check for ten thousand dollars, and you take the, take the graphic. And Jason agreed to it, and then okay. returned the check. Like I don't know if it's the day later or like you know, next Monday or something. But he returned the, the check. No, yeah, he way. Couldn't, wouldn't take the money. He wouldn't take ten grand. Wow. Didn't you guys make shirts too? We, yeah, we made. Like act, we, made. We, we we actually made the Jason Lee shirts um, with a pentagram on, on them, and I think those went straight to Japan oh, really? so that he wouldn't ever see them. No, <laughs> <laughs> we sold them to the J- Japanese distributor. That's I guess incredible. Wow. I wish I had one of those. I mean, to turn down a check for ten grand. I mean, it's a board graphic. Yeah, it's a crazy board graphic, though. Yeah, Mark, let me tell you, my uh, my friend had one growing up. We didn't want to touch it. And it actually makes it kind of worse if you take the money for it. Because I think, like, then you're, you're selling your soul. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we're selling soul. <laughs> yeah. That's incredible. Wow. And so they, they gave it to uh, Nottis. Yeah. Uh, actually, we, we, were, we didn't even really think about giving it to Nottis. Huh. And he just he offered to take it. Like, when he saw, like, the conundrum that we were facing, like, we didn't know what to do with the graphic. Like, I think even at a certain point, I was trying to make it into a world board and trying to fit, like, world industries somehow into the pentagram. Okay. <laughs> And even to the point where like, I thought maybe Ron Chapman could get it, and that just would have been completely absurd. Just, just, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and so Nottis probably was seeing what was going on. It's like, hey, people always make fun of me because of my name, and they make a big deal out of it unnecessarily. Yeah. I'll take it as a joke. And Nottis spelled backwards. Didn't he uh, write that in the ad, too? Yeah, he wrote in his own handwriting. It says, folks, these are jokes. Seriously, these are all jokes. Yeah. Oh, really? Yeah. There was an ad with a board. It had, like, the graphic, whatever, and, like, it just something like a, there's something on the top. Can't remember, but this proves just, that they were right about Nottis all along, so yeah, says, or yeah. something like that. What if Chocolate gave you a graphic like that? I would have been like, give me the check. <laughs> so they were offering him 10 grand to take that graphic. Just... Yeah, and then he'd still get royalties above that. <laughs> yeah. So what did, did Nottis get the $10,000? $10, I don't think so. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure he made a lot of money anyway off that board, yeah. probably. Oh, for sure. <laughs> Man. That's crazy, though. Board sales back then? Hearing that now, that, that those the numbers Gabriel now. At the same time? No. Yeah, the Gabriel Jesus came out at the same time. Yeah, that's, what I, that's I like that it's right next to each other there, Raj. I like how you set that up. Yeah. What was it? Is there a board graphic that you just were like, this is? Because was there a graphic that like you wanted to make that they would never make? Not back then, I don't think. Or vice versa. Yeah. Was there a graphic that they wanted to do that you were like, guys, this is kind of. Uh, not a board graphic, but um, the video Love Child <laughs> okay. has a picture of a, a baby zebra on it. Yeah. So so Rocco's idea, because the term Love Child is a song by um, Dana Ross, I think. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And it, it's really about a, a child that's born to an unmarried couple. Mm-hmm. That's what a love child is. Yeah. But I think at the time, Rocco thought, or I thought, it was like an interracial couple. <laughs> okay. so, so, he, so he wanted a black man and a white woman holding a zebra baby. And I'm like... <laughs> I'll draw the baby, but I'm not going to draw the parents like that. that that's like, <laughs> it's like the offspring of, of an interracial couple is like a fucking freak animal. <laughs> right. <laughs> wow. I mean, Rocco was like pushing, he was pushing, pushing buttons. buttons and pushing the boundaries, you know? Yeah, he was enjoying it. He, he, was, he was enjoying it. Crazy, dude. Yeah, like the um, when Spike was talking about the ad that got turned down by Transworld that oh, yeah. prompted him to start Big Brother. Right. And he was he was mis, mis uh, staking it for a, a shorty's ad, but the ad that Rocco wanted to run was a picture of like Gabriel Rodriguez about to shoot himself in the head with a gun. Oh, <laughs> oh really? So like you know, Steve's pushing ideas like that. Yeah. yeah. Oh, that was the one he was talking about. So they started Big Brother, mm-hmm. and you you were a part of that, right? Yeah. Yeah. What did what was your what was your role in? Uh... Well, the first issue um, was pretty much um, commandeered or ma- managed by uh, Walter Sims and and Nottis. Nottis did all the, the graphics and oh. wrote, wrote wrote an article with me. But Walter Sims was this in-house guy at World ever mm-hmm. since before I even started working there. He was kind of like you would. Well, he did the, all the IT. Like he he um, made a computer program on like I don't know whatever 
you know, now they'd be called like AP21 or whatever they okay. use at Globe. Oh. But he did it all himself. And then he, he actually laid out a lot of the ads and came up with some, a lot of the ad concepts. Oh, wow. And uh, so he, he came on to, to fully edit, be the editor of Big Brother. Mm. But he only lasted one uh, issue because the first issue like was such a disappointment to Steve. And was while, it? it was that's dis- what they gave it away for free? Mm-hmm. Oh, it was a really big disappointment to him. Yeah, there was even like one uh, contest uh, article where when Walter was doing the, the, the page layout, they repeated like the same page twice or they repeated it, you know. And so okay. then the, the ending of the, the article was missing <laughs> and uh, the printing was bad. Maybe that's not their fault, but right. yeah, on the whole, like Steve didn't wasn't uh, pleased with he the outcome. Pleased. Yeah. I mean, it's the first. Man. And then, yeah, and then Walter took it really like you know, it was kind of like rubbed the wrong way by that. Mm-hmm. So he's like, I'm out of here. And he moved to Seattle. He's out of the picture. Oh, wow. Oh, damn. Wow. Walter. Um, Is that when you guys brought in uh, Tremaine? Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Mm. But just one other thing. Um, the the board that comes in the black bag that says with a, a pornographic image of the woman on the inside, on the board the graphic. Yeah. 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 Uh, like Walter came up with a censorship as weak as fuck uh, slogan. Okay. Because oh. at first, like, there was this, like, um, thing in the 80s that, like it was a graphic sold on t-shirts and it said like censorship is un-american and mm-hmm. it has like a guy with an american flag um gag on okay and i just thought that, that wasn't like i didn't want to do that so then i was thinking like right writing like maybe censorship is obscene and so i'm just sitting next to walter and he's like typing it in on the graphics program and i'm like yeah that's kind of lame right and he's like and they just typed in weak as fuck instead yeah <laughs> oh wow and that right. board came with the in a black trash bag yeah. almost with that sticker on it yeah but did, it, was that your board graphic idea the 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 woman well the the actual composition and and the woman like yeah. it's taken from a, a, a penthouse centerfold oh yeah okay did you come in any problems with any of that stuff like uh, were people, i mean i'm sure upset parents or something like that but like <laughs> yeah maybe it didn't even reach that far i think yeah. maybe just the shops would just return the, the boards or they would keep them behind the, the in the back of the shop and only shops sh- didn't know what they were ordering at the time yeah, yeah. oh really oh yeah. wait they didn't know what they were ordering no you'd be like we didn't have catalogs like Megan would call up the <laughs> shops and be like yeah we got this new Randy Colburn board maybe you want that oh. and like yeah let me get 10 of them <laughs> yeah. those would those show up yeah. <laughs> that's amazing that's actually. pretty <laughs> incredible yeah. right Rosh had that board you just told board. the story that yeah. your, your dad found it yeah he's like don't tell it to your mom. <laughs> <laughs> Did you you scave the board then? Fuck yeah. Yeah. You probably had many uh, nights alone with that yeah. graphic. Yeah. Break out the lotion. <laughs> Don't talk. It's a, we're McKee's right here. Yeah. You know? So Big Brother. Mm-hmm. Big Brother starting. What what uh, what role did you play in Big Brother? What were you? Uh... I guess uh, starting with issue two, I, I kind of tried to take over being the editor. Oh uh, yeah, which I which I did. Oh okay. And we didn't even like it wasn't even set up like as a, a salaried position. Like me and Cliver just enjoyed writing stuff for the magazine, and we you know our income was based off board graphics. Oh. Um, but yeah, I would go through every article and edit them, and you know pick articles and stuff like that. Oh really? Write interview questions. Oh. Yeah, a lot of people assumed that I was doing the the layout work for. I wish I did some, but I I did the boring like nuts and bolts layout. And mm-hmm. Tremaine um, did all like the the features, and he did you know the cover layouts and stuff like that. Oh, okay. Oh, wow. And then yeah. what, were you like? Um, did you eventually get paid for that position that you were that you were doing? Uh, I, I, yeah, eventually I did do that. Um, did did get paid, but before mm-hmm. I did before that happened, I actually invested in the magazine. Oh, really? Because. Um, as of like World Industries owned started out owning Big Brother for issue one. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Then Mike Trinansky, who was the um, the founder of Plan B, mm-hmm. and before that H Street, he did H Street. Yep. But he was within the World Camp by then doing Plan B. Okay. And you know he had the Plan B team, and he saw that like you know their writers were in the magazine, and so he said to Steve like, um, can I buy a, a quarter, a twenty five percent stake in the magazine, wow. help pay for the printing. So he did that and became part owner, owner with Steve. Okay. He wrote an article in issue three covering the San Francisco Back to the City contest. Okay. And uh, <laughs> like the rest of the whole staff was like, you know, Cliver, me, Nottis, um, Tremaine. Okay. And we just had like a much more zanier take on things. And Mike was like, like Mike would fit into the world. Like he unfortunately passed yes. um, in the early 90s. Right. Um, but if he was alive today, like he would be like, you know, the, the way like he looked at skating, you know, like with building the plan B team, like having this like epic team and videos and yeah. the, just upping the level of skating and stuff like that with every feature, you know, 
he he was like prescient in that way okay. about skating but we were more about like the ridiculous kooky aspect of it right yeah, yeah. <laughs> so like he he wrote his his san francisco article and then we're like oh well this can't be our only coverage so then we had another one of our writers earl parker also cover the the contest article so there was all already this like <laughs> clickish thing happening within the magazine yeah. where it's like we didn't want any serious shit in the magazine right. like i think also like in issue two we had within the news column which is like right at the front of the magazine a picture of Glenn Danzig just randomly inserted where skateboarding news is okay. and, and Ternowski like Clive remembers Ternowski being like this can't go in there. there there could be a skater in this area of the page like yeah. why are we featuring Danzig like, he doesn't, there's nothing even about him remotely in the magazine <laughs> So, and then Mike could also kind of see that like the magazine wasn't shaping up to, to the way like he thought it would. And uh, it definitely like our sales weren't good for issue two. Okay. Like we actually tried to sell the magazine at that point rather than giving it away. Mm -hmm. And he wanted out. And so I right. saw that as a second, second, second issue. Yeah. Uh, no, third magazine. Okay. Because he, he did an article in the third magazine. So was it, it wasn't monthly by well, Brian. No, no it's it? about every two months. Every two months. Okay. So you yeah. guys started off insane right off the bat. You guys were putting crazy stuff in because disorganized, definitely. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, because I always remember. Well, issue Paul three Paul definitely had some insane, insane stuff in it. Yeah. I, I mean, I remember the later issues of Big Brother. It was just like you would li listen to a, or not listen, you would look at an interview and it wouldn't even. You were like, what the fuck was that interview about? Yeah. It was about, like, freaking, I don't even know, random shit. Was it like that in the beginning, too? Um, well, I, like, maybe issue two, like, there was a pair of tits in it, like, and maybe <laughs> yeah. some swearing. Yeah. But then issue three, <laughs> um, Nottis and uh, his girlfriend at the time turned to this article, How to Kill Yourself. Yeah. Because his girlfriend uh, was had, like, known a family member or somebody that had committed suicide. So okay. I, I can kind of see that as part of, like, you know, the, the process of, like, um, coming to terms with it. By, mm. okay, I'm going to write this sarcastic article, like, yeah, fine, you want to kill yourself? Try these other methods first before, you know, just, don't just kill yourself. Like, tr just become a crazy alcoholic first or a drug addict and get a I little... Really go for yeah, it. really get some <laughs> yeah. enjoyment out of life first. So then that, that article made the news because, you know, parents found it and Crazy. they thought it was insane to have that yeah. in there. How many issues of Big Brother were, was there? Um, I think there was 106, but I... Oh. Okay, so kind of like um, backpedaling a little bit, yeah, or yeah, yeah. Uh, taking it back a little bit. Um, so Ternowski wanted out of the magazine. Oh, yeah. So I, like, I stepped forward. I'm like, Steve, can I buy his shares? <laughs> no way. <laughs> yeah. Wow. So I bought his stake in the company. Wow. And still just, you know, did it for fun. Okay. Just thinking like, oh, how's this going to pay off someday? And yeah. then I, I, I was just looking through one of my old back issues today, like issue 50, like Cliver. I had left the magazine by then. Are you? Oh. But then Cliver like still worked as the editor at that point, okay. like where I'd previously done that. And he's like, yeah, I recall like Mark, like wanting to, to you know, buy the part of the magazine. And I think I recall him saying something like, oh, really cool. But then thinking distinctly, remembering back what a fucking fool <laughs> <laughs> did you feel that way though after you bought it or after you uh put money in i, I don't know yeah i guess so because i saw that it probably wouldn't make money and the only way that it would ever make money is if we actually sold the magazine mm -hmm. yeah and amazingly that that's what happened in 1997 um the accountants at world uh found a buyer for the magazine uh, Larry Flint yeah. from Hustler Magazine. That's right. That's right. Yeah. And then, uh, so then I was like, okay, I'm cashed out. I'm done with the magazine at this point. Right. Yeah. How much did you put in? About 40. 40K? Mm -hmm. Wow. How much did you cash out for? About double that. Double that. Nice. Great investment. investment yeah. You know? Yeah, I was just unbelievably lucky. Yeah. No, that's amazing. Mm. But even when Larry Flint got on board, you weren't like, oh, this is going to be good. Well, he, I had he could a, take this magazine and throw it into a different how did level. He, how did he even get in? Like, how did he even find out about the magazine? We used an accounting firm at the time because World was in a process of, of uh, like courting like outside investors or something. Mm. So we had to have these like, uh, I guess they're called accounting firms or something to go over our books. Like it's a, a third party to make sure that like, like on paper we're we're selling what we, what we say we're selling. You're legit. Yeah. 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 And it was the same accounting firm that Flint used. Oh. So they knew that, so Scott and Frank knew that Flint was looking to buy magazines. Mm. And actually, we had another magazine that we were doing at the time called Blunt, which was snowboarding. Yeah. Okay. And I think Flint was more interested in, in Blunt because snowboarding is like way more commercial than skateboarding back right. then. Mm -hmm. Like you can have car ads in a snowboard magazine, mm -hmm. maybe even liquor ads. Okay. Yeah. 
Um, but we said, or Steve said, no, you got to take Big Brother too. Wow. <laughs> And then, but you didn't want, you just wanted to cash out right away. You didn't want to see where Larry Flint could maybe take this yeah, thing. Yeah, I could Or you thought maybe he was going to dead it and not, and just do the blunt. Uh, I didn't what think he, he, I didn't think he was going to dead okay. Big Brother, Big Brother. He actually dead it. <laughs> he yeah. actually like uh, shit canned blunt, like oh. within a year of buying blunt. <laughs> oh, wow. But what happened was like, um, I could have gone over to Flint like and have, had a, um, like a job there full okay. time. Mm-hmm. And I, you know, we even had like, like the pay worked out and stuff like that. Oh. But like Flint was like not what you would think it would be. Um, Flint was like run really like corporate style where yeah, wear it, suit and ties to work. You had to wear a collared shirt and like f- like first off like the guys at Big Brother said we're not doing that so they didn't have to do that. Because <laughs> <laughs> they were in the Flint building. Yeah. They yeah. were in the, the Flint building until Flint uh, canned the magazine in 2002. Oh, okay. I think that was when it was uh, let go. Yeah. Um, but yeah, they, they even had stuff like at Flint where um, in their offices, it's like they had set art that like, you know, that Larry Flint or whoever, you know, decorated the interior of the offices with. Okay. Um, and they're like, you can't take that stuff down. And you have to, it has to stay up on, on the walls. Oh. No. Right. I think they might have eventually t- taken that stuff down at Big Brother and the, um, the Big Brother offices, but I imagine they, they tried. In some way. Yeah. Because I mean, I could imagine like you're running this magazine <clears throat> and, you, you know, you need your... You need to be in a creative space too. You can't have these like nice, yeah, or you know what I mean. Like uh, the Flint Building doesn't seem like well, a they, good fit. For they they managed to keep it creative, yeah. definitely. But I, I, the real reason why I didn't go on to Flint or even do a do Big Brother part time was the sale <laughs> went down in '97. Okay, and in '96 is when I created those world industries Devil Man character and Flame Boy. <laughs> yeah, oh, <laughs> right. Oh. So that was like surprisingly successful <laughs> so i was like i'll just do this full time oh. well it was a flame boy what was it wet willy also yeah wet willy also wet, wet willy yeah you saw like that was the... well that kind of saved my job there because it's like you know i in around 94 or, or around that time that's when the the uh, um, the manager just like said like okay we can only pay you like this much per graphic mm-hmm. and we you don't get a proper salary or insurance or anything like mm-hmm. that oh, wow. But you created these characters that became like yeah, because it's like icons. okay, I can only get six hundred bucks a board. I can I'll just draw, draw a happy face, yeah. <laughs> right? Yellow flame boy, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> flame boy. How did you create those characters? The things were like, well, the the first Devil Man thing that I drew was um, not even for a board graphic. Um, a receptionist was having a party. She's like, oh, make a birth, make an invite card for me, and so she brought me this uh, printout of like it's a pulp. Um, pulp novel and you know from like the 50s or something so it's an illustration of like a you know alluring uh, woman and the the name of the novel was called the root of his evil so it's this lady you know that's like a seductress and he's she jamie the receptionist is like hey give her a tattoo um so i drew a happy face on the girl's arm on the picture i'm like oh I'll give it some horns and make it a devil. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> no and way. And then I showed it to Rocco and he, then we made the World Industries logo into that. And and then it, like uh, back then, our, our Crumb, the movie about the artist, uh, underground comic artist was out. Mm. And I saw that in theater and I, I really was into like trying to make a comic. Oh, okay. So what we did with, the, with those first character boards was we um, packaged a comic that would come with each board. Okay. And the comics were um, styled like these uh, religious tracks. They're like rectangular and they're like eight pages long. It's like the pamphlets they hand out. Yeah, yeah. they're in the the company is called Chick Publications. They they've probably made like a hundred of these little kind of comics that like tell you you're gonna burn in hell if you don't do yeah. this this yeah. or that. Yeah. So our comic pamphlet said, um, "Let's make a deal," and it was like, "We want it, we want to buy your soul." So you can go to hell. <laughs> <laughs> and you drew the, the comics. Right? Yeah. Yeah. And that's where like devil, it had Devil Man in it and Flame Boy was his like uh, sidekick. I mean, Flame Boy became this huge thing. <laughs> huge. <Yeah. laughs> when, are, you, are, you, are you surprised that, that that one thing out of all the things you did, like why, why that one thing? Like why? Why does this shit happen like that? Do you, do, do you no, trip out on that? I have no fucking idea. <laughs> no, yeah. <laughs> It's resonated with kids. Well, right? dude, I was a kid back then. And I was like, whoa. But you also, they had a really dope team, too. I was like, yeah. the stage where, like, all right, it was a little too kiddish for me, but they had a really dope team, too. So it's like, when, when did you realize that that, that was going to be a, a big success, the whole Flame Boy thing? Well, it got me back in house. So I was full time getting back, having my, my full time job back. You created Flame Boy, Wet Willie, and Devil Man as, like, when you were a freelance? Yeah. So you owned that property. Pretty much, 
I don't know if I, I don't know if I do or not. No, how because no, because World trademarked it, so they, they okay. have it. They've trademarked. Right. And how does this? How does that work, though? I mean, as an artist, and you know, owning your artwork and stuff. I mean, you obviously work for a company, so they're owning your artwork. Right? Yeah, I Is think that... I think it's called a work for hire. Okay. So it's like you don't own the rights to the characters in the end. Wow, damn. How does that make? How did that make you feel, though? Did you care? Not really, because no. I was, you know, had a job. You had a job. Well, so you drew the devil dude first, and then the uh, flame boy, and then did you, did you were like, I gotta add something else to us, and made what Willie? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what Willie? Yeah, actually, well, good and evil. Yeah, I thought of the name Wet Willie, but the character uh, had to be it had to be pointed out to me. Um, JT, um, he was the art director for John World Thomas? at the time. Yeah, John Thomas, okay. uh, former Alva skater. He was uh, our uh, full time art director at World Industries. So he laid out all our ads. He's like, "Yeah, Flame Boy is kind of shaped like a teardrop. You should make a water teardrop and have them fight each other." <laughs> <laughs> Wet Willie was born. Do you, do you guys started some shit with that man? You, you whole Wet Willie Flame Boy movement. I swear, all these kids are buying it everywhere. Like Kelly's getting giddy over here. <laughs> he loves the Flame Boy Wet Willie. Well, but, uh, did did you like it? I, I did like it. Yeah, <laughs> I still okay. think it's good. Okay. I, I mean, it's just, maybe people think it's cheesy. And actually, like the team was dope at the time, but mm -hmm. then once the boards, the character boards started selling, they did not like that whole program at all. And then because uh, it was just team boards selling more than their boards. Yeah. Selling. So all the the original like World Riders like Day One. No, did Day One go to Decca? Like, I think so, yeah. Yeah, yeah, Decca was created like as their team that didn't have any of that cartoon. Uh, stuff oh, so on they it. wanted to get away from all of that. Yeah, and, yeah. yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. If World Industries is going forward with that, that's just funny though. What, what the kids can do, the kids like something so much, like it, or the company can go because of that. Yeah, and even the writers are like, ah. W was this before or after Big Brother? that this was Wet Willie and Flame Boy was going on. It was it, towards the end towards of my the, involvement in Big Brother. When, when did you stop Big Brother, what issue? It was around the early 20s, I think. Oh, um, really? Probably, uh, it was around 1997 though, for sure. Oh, wow. okay. And did that free up more time for you to- uh, just, draw, just do drawings all just the time. Just drawings, yeah. What's the process for drawing, you know? I mean, being an artist, you can't just, like, like you said earlier, like you don't want to draw right now. You know? But uh, I mean, what yeah, it's you, a very like, solitary activity, actually. It is yeah. right. Like yeah. you need to get in your mood, and you can't just be like, I can't just be like, yo, draw Kelly wearing, you know, a dashiki, and, and you know, <laughs> like you would, you you need to get into the zone, right? Yeah. You need to. What, what's your what's your zone? What what's your what's your happy drawing place? Do we do we have one, or is it just kind of whenever the mood strikes? You have a process. Um, have a glass of wine, or some beer, or some, or do you have like a, a, a routine or something? Yeah, not drinking. No, no, no. more caffeine fuel. Oh, more caffeine based. Yeah, yeah. Okay. To, to get the process started. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Um. Do, yeah. Just just doodling. Like, well, usually no. Actually, I think I, I wait for an idea to like think of first, mm -hmm. rather than I just don't like scribble down and like do designs and something will pop up that's I could develop into something. Mm -hmm. It's more like. Um, you know, like a, a kid that's actually accidentally killed his brother. Like, what would that scene look like? And right. Like, how could I draw it? And then you'll start sketching it. And then sometimes, like, I'll do it like from different angles. <laughs> oh, really? It, yeah. Um, and then end up with like, oh, the, the baby should be in the foreground, like really big. And then the the parents uh, and stuff like hovering over him, like. Right. From, and then you, you're, you're viewing the scene from like a. The, or the floor, like the floor worms I'd be. Yeah. yeah. Are you talking about the blue guy Mariano yeah. board? Accidental death. <clears throat> but that was a, he had, you know, I used to have those disc guns. I loved them. Yeah, you know, so did I. If, yeah, I had is one. Is that, yeah. That's why I had it. That's why you had it in there? We had a tile floor like that in my mom's house. <laughs> oh, yeah? Yeah. That was a pretty, oh. How often, like, when you're doing a graphic, do you, like, um, if he has a big character, say, like, the family there, is that, like, someone from your life? Is that someone you know? Um, no, I, I, it's more, um, I wanted to get like a Norman Rockwell look to it. So it like, mm -hmm. looks like a typical, like suburban American family. Yeah. And so I think I even took the kids, um, faces I referenced it from some of his paintings, like kids from his paintings. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I think the kid holding the gun with a surprise look in the original Nor Norman Rockwell painting, uh, he's surprised to find like the Santa Claus suit that his dad obviously is wearing. Like he... Do you discover that his dad is Santa Claus or something mm, like yeah. that? It might be that. It might be something different. Do, were you guys getting any heat from the outside world? No. When skate... you were doing graphics like this? Uh, back, back then, did any of the, the writers have say in their graphics? Um, 
Yeah, I think they, they did have say, but a lot a lot of times we just spring them on them. And that oh. actually was, I was kind of like um, wondering if that like led to like a lot of the the guys leaving the company because it's like they kept getting stuck with these graphics that they didn't like ask for in the first place. Right, <laughs> yeah. right. Yeah, but you look back now and they're like iconic. Yeah, seriously. Board graphics. Yeah. And I think know? that they didn't really like speak up even if they maybe thought it was a little gnarly just because it was income, you know, you get board royalties. Yeah, most of them are all like 15, 16 years old. Yeah. I mean, you're making probably thousands of dollars from, mm-hmm. these, from these, you're making these guys Rich. a lot of money. <laughs> yeah. You could do a nine club board graphic for me. <laughs> <laughs> chocolate graphic uh did you ever do um outside work do you ever uh did any other companies hit you up and want to do some freelance stuff or would, was that even not an option back then yeah it wasn't really an option no. i just thought like um i think we even had a non-compete agreement at, at one point oh. like with globe but yeah i would never do like work from like outside the world camp wow no no unless so, it would maybe snowboards or something but that we didn't world didn't make snow well, actually World did make snowboards. Yeah, oh, that was the time when I was freelancing, though. That actually helped me get back in w- with World because I was doing the stuff for Forum, and they're like, "Hey, can you do our snowboards?" I'm like, "Well, you know." Oh wow! Yeah, paying for that. Yeah. <laughs> were you skating at all? Did you skate at all when you were doing all these board graphics back no, then? No, I was no? kind of blowing it. Like I just, I was just really focused on drawing and like the skill level around me. I was just so intimidated by everybody. It must have been. You're pretty probably in awe too of just watching all of it, like seeing a lot of it go on in the. Like, yeah. or when you saw a clip of someone skating your board in the video, you're probably like, were you pretty stoked on that or what? Uh, yeah, for sure. I, I, I was like most stoked just by seeing like, you know, the guys like the blind team skating in the parking lot and just out front. Oh, oh wow. Wow. yeah. You were doing every company's graphics, right? We did blind 101 uh world yeah liberty we had liberty with mike smith oh I yeah some liberty. graphics with them oh okay who did the uh todd congelated graphic uh with the icy bear i did that one did you yeah there, i think there was three of those uh, the one graphic it's got like he's holding the uh the mug shot yes is that his phone number backwards it's his phone on, phone, phone number backwards right. <laughs> <laughs> i heard right. that he yeah. said he got some, a few phone calls oh really <laughs> yeah. so I figured it out. did he want that in there or did no, you just i just put it in there you put it in there <laughs> <laughs> Where are you coming up with these ideas? It's incredible. What about the fucked up blind kids? Was that you? Um, that yeah, that was me. And uh, I think maybe Steve wanted to do a board series with that had trading cards or stickers that came with them. Okay, like garbage pill kids. Yeah, and then there was that garbage pill kids cards. Yeah. Uh, those cards in the eighties. So we made our take on that, and then I, I think. I was. We were trying to think of the equivalent of garbage pail kids, mm-hmm. and we knew it was going to be something blind kids. And I'm like, Steve, like Rocco, what are we going to call this? It's like so fucked up. All these graphics, because I, I had the names all picked out. Oh, you did. Yeah, okay. like Hi Guy and Rear and Rudy. Right. <laughs> and I'm like, this is really fucked up. Like, what yeah. can we call mm-hmm. instead of garbage pail kids? What, what can we call? He's like, just call it that. Fucked up blind kids. Yeah, <laughs> that was it. it. It almost sounded like nothing was really thought out it was kind of more of like a conversation like like you just said like it's fucked up man Call yeah it that fucked up blanket yeah. like it was just kind of like you yeah, don't agonize over it too much yeah it was kind of like this run and gun style of like just although rear and rudy we had a hard time coming up with like that uh literative name or that, na- that name for oh. for rear and rudy i think steve might have proposed raping rudy at first <laughs> Dude. <laughs> I'm like, no. Rear End Rudy is probably better. Than, Did yeah. any of the dudes get bummed when they saw those graphics? At, at least with Rear End Rudy, you could say that it's consensual. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> Were any um, of those dudes bummed at all when they saw the graphics? I don't really remember. Like, I, I'm kind of like a really, even more so, more so back then, I'm a, kind of like an unapproachable type of like antisocial person. So yeah. hmm. I'm surprised you're sitting here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> When I worked at Dwindle, like you'd seriously come in like around like eleven o'clock, and you just beeline it straight to your office and close the door, and oh, really? no one saw him for the rest of the day. <laughs> so unapproachable, you think that just uh, nobody, the skaters and stuff. Well, did for it some for some reason, like Cliver always seemed to get more flack from the writers that he did graphics oh, for really? than than I did. Oh, you know, like. Even stuff that wasn't his fault, like, you know, Sheffrey or whatever would, would like bat his glasses off or something. But oh, I never really, no one really ever got in my face. How long were you, uh, did you stay at World for? Until they sold it? World was owned by Rocco until 2002. Okay. Then he sold World to Globe. Mm-hmm. And I stayed on working for Globe. And mm. the Globe's distribution was called Dwindle Distribution. They yep. did World. And mm-hmm. so I stayed on with them until uh, this summer. Well, actually, you said World. Um Globe sold the brand world in uh, 2007. So then p- part of the deal with the sale um, was that, uh, and then they hired as their art director, the guy that I was assisting me, mm. this guy, Dean. And uh, 
but part of the sales deal was that I would have to continue doing graphics for the new the new ownership for the for the next year, like through through two thousand eight or something. Oh, okay. Carry over. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So you so you continue to work for them for a year, and then yeah. Did you not did you uh, not want to work for them anymore? How did Globe feel about that? Well, that was part of maybe Globe even suggested it. Like they, really? you know, in okay, order to keep the brand. Well, no, in order to Sell actually to make the sale, it's yeah. like well, you know, they don't want to buy the company unless the artist like at least helps mm, us yeah. for another year. Mm. So are you getting paid by both people? No, I was getting just paid only through Globe. But oh. I think I think the the new owner might have been you know funding that. But it, on, on paper, it was just through Globe f- uh, for me. Uh-huh. But that was like a little annoying because then it was like I didn't they they the new company was like telling me like what to do more like for some snowboards they were like saying well you know this collage look is really in the season like we want something like that <laughs> were you uh. just and then another thing that they did was they had a, a distributor in Canada that wanted skis so there's actually some world industry snow skis out there. Whoa. No <laughs> way. Yeah. Art, hey. art work done by you? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Jeez. That was incredible. Jeez. How was it uh, transitioning from, you know, doing Ruby List to like Illustrator? I guess it was relatively easy because it's like conceptually the same process. Mm-hmm. You know, you're, you have, the, instead of having separate sheets of Ruby List, you have separate layers in the program. So hmm. it wasn't that hard. Um, at first, they didn't have a good tracing program in uh, Illustrator. This is all way too technical, but there's, there's out there that want to hear it. Stream, streamline. Yeah, streamline finally was uh, at a level where it looked good, but yeah. before that, they didn't have a good tracing program, mm-hmm. so you had to go and trace the graphic yourself with the mouse or the uh, whatever tool you're using. You'd scan the graphic and then bring it into Illustrator, yeah, like the hand drawn. Right? Yeah, and that's kind of a shame too, because then. Like with all the graphics up to like around 96, you had a nice piece of artwork that was done, drawn in ink yeah. on, on a nice piece of paper. Mm-hmm. But then it got to a point where the, the computer came in and uh, I would just scan a pencil sketch and then trace that with a, for the, to get the black line art right. in the computer. So you'd only have a sketch and then the printed board, but you wouldn't have like a frameable piece of like ink, artwork, ink yeah. drawing. Yeah, it's almost like, uh, you know, film photography to digital photography. In, mm-hmm. in the same kind of sense where it's like, yeah, it was just, it, it was an art form. Yeah, and you don't now have your negative or whatever. Yeah. So what do you use nowadays? Do you, uh, do you do the hand drawing or do you use like a stylus pen thing? I, uh, I tried. I, I, I couldn't get the hang of the, no? of the pen. Um, so I just. The walking would, tablet? Yeah. I just use a mouse. Um, what about when they stopped doing Streamline and Illustrator came up with Live Trace? <laughs> like, yeah, I would use, I, I would use Live Trace too. Yeah? yeah. Streamline was the best though. It was good, right. yeah. Good. Yeah, actually, Live Trace uh, isn't as good as it used to be. It used to be better. So I think I yeah. used just an older version of Adobe Illustrator. Uh, uh, oh, really? Mm-hmm. With Adobe Illustrator. So yeah. you're drawing the sketch, scan it in maybe, Live yeah. Trace it, yeah, and then go in and do your thing. Yeah. I did some paintings, though, like maybe about three or four years ago for Cliché, with the really old school way, like the same way that it, I did the Accidental Gum Death. Oh, oh sick. The soccer player ones? Yeah, the soccer player ones. Those yeah. were good. Yeah. Right. Those were really good. Those were sick, yeah. yeah, those were really sick. Thanks. What, uh, was that a big uh, canvas that you did those on, or how? What, uh, how it's big? called illustration board, but yeah, oh. it's little, little, yeah, larger than the what the artwork looks like on the board. Everything looks nicer when you do it like big, and then you kind of shrink it a little bit. Yeah, it's like it's, it's it tightens the detail almost yeah. too, right? Yeah. How long did those take you to do each one? Um, each one took about seven days, oh, like wow. from, from drawing it to painting it. Holy shit! And then like when how I was how long did it take you to do Joey's teeth? <laughs> probably, probably a day <laughs> <laughs> gotta get those things right yeah and... but like whenever I, I was like I'm working on some really time consuming thing like that like mm. I think about like other times in my life where I've just completely wasted time like I, like the thought for some random reason I was working on one of those paintings and I was thinking back to when I was a kid and I would just like sit in front of the TV like watching like Gilligan's Island <laughs> yeah <laughs> I like thinking about it. I've seen probably every fucking episode of that stupid show. Yeah. Like, who cares if this painting is taking seven days to do? Like, it's, right? it'll be worth it in the end. Yeah. It was a good show, man. Gilligan's Island. Yeah. Man. That was sick for Never sure. The skipper. Yeah. Marianne. Gilligan. Ginger. Ginger. <laughs> the Howells. <laughs> and the Professor. Okay, so it's maybe it was show. worth it. So, I mean, World, they must have gotten like... Uh, cease and desists 
from a lot of the artwork, right? I mean, you guys used a lot of the... Uh, yeah, cease and desist letters, I yeah. guess they're called. Like, they come from these law firms uh, <laughs> that represent other companies. Yeah. Because um, that was one of the things that we would do at World. Would, would be, we'd take logos from other companies, like, and use those as board graphics. Right. Um, like, one of the ones early on was this uh, Burger King graphic that I did for Jason Lee. Yeah. And uh, the Burger King logo at the time, it, they've changed it since then, but... It, you could fit Jason Lee perfectly where the letters Burger King used to go between mm. the two buns. Right. <laughs> they, they called it, they referred to it as the bun halves logo. So when we got this letter, they're like, we see that you've used the bun halves logo, uh, you know, without authorization, something like that in lawyer speak. Right. And uh, so in that case, what we usually ended up doing was like, we would say, okay, well, we'll surrender our inventory, you know, just don't sue us or anything like that. And then they'd usually be fine with that. So surrender the inventory, you know, mail back up like two boxes of boards to whatever the company was. Oh, and really? They'd be like, okay, yeah. Okay. Now, now so we, got, we got all your boards. boards. Yeah. <laughs> two boxes of yeah. boards. Like, <laughs> wow. There's a law firm out there with like the best collection of skateboards right now. <laughs> yeah. Seriously. <laughs> right. Yeah. They, they probably like destroyed them or something, you know, they, that like, this is like unauthorized, like yeah. they must be destroyed. <laughs> but it's funny though, even the Burger King logo, I mean, I'm actually surprised that you guys got a cease and desist. It's, it's so kind of, it's just, it's plain. It's not really like any th crazy thing, you know? I mean, that logo back then was just like half a circle. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like top and bottom. But yeah. that's kind of like the definition of like a corporate company. It's yeah. like they're yeah. very, um, you know, protective of, of their, whatever, their visuals. Yeah, yeah, that's true. That's true. Was there any one that was just uh, crazy where they had to like pay a shit ton of money? I think you almost lose your job. No, actually, like Steve would get stoked whenever we would receive these letters. Oh, and really? We put them up on the wall. Like he'd be all <laughs> proud of them. Even if it cost him a, lo a lot of money, he wouldn't care. I, I don't think it really. There was just a few instances where it cost the company money. Usually, oh. it was just like cease and desist, like stop and don't do it again or right. something. Stop okay. on the wrist. But yeah, we had to do a few payouts. Um, one was for uh, this Winnie the Pooh graphic the, oh. on the Rocco Three. Mm -hmm. That That's one. From Disney. What? That's from Disney. Yeah, originally, like, you know, Winnie the Pooh was like A.A. Milne, but then they somehow the Disney company bought the rights from the family or something like that. So, yeah, it was Disney that, that uh, sent us a cease and desist. Um, not for the board graphic, though. They, they, don't, they didn't really see that. That was, like, um, 1990, 1989. Okay. But around 96, when we started World Snowboards, we put that graphic on a snowboard, oh. and they saw the snowboard, and uh, we had to end up doing a, a out of I don't know what a out of court settlement or whatever it's oh, called. Right. Um, I think it was like sixty four thousand dollars. <laughs> wow. Uh, I mean, that could put a company out of business. Yeah. Right. Sixty four. I mean, that's a lot of money. Yeah. Dude. Especially back then. Yeah. I wonder if we could get insurance about for that. I know. <laughs> like, seriously. This, this is the insurance. How come they didn't do the same thing though? Whether it's like, hey, stop making it. Yeah. Just... That was the one and only time that Disney uh, hit us up. Okay. And I think they, in the case, uh, Steve might have even Steve might have said that. Uh, like to show that we were in such bad faith and like deliberately using their thing without permission. Like another graphic that we had used without their permission was the Beauty and the Beast board for oh, Henry Sanchez. Right. So okay. that was definitely infringing on Disney too. That was like you know the the, the movie Beauty and the Beast. Yeah. Huge franchise. And uh, at first that wasn't going to be Henry Henry's graphic. Like he didn't ask for it. At first, um, Day One Song um, either hit up me or Sean. Like he wanted something featuring the characters from Beauty and the Beast. Oh. And he was like trying to describe the scene. This is, I vaguely recollect this. Like he's trying to describe the scene. Like, yeah, I want it to be like later in time when the, the beast and the, the girl, Belle, are still living in the castle, but there's like cobwebs and the rose. And then I'm like, no, 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 no. <laughs> there's only one graphic that we can do with Beauty and the Beast. So yeah. it's like the bestiality scene. <laughs> oh my God. Like, we love your idea, yeah. but we're going to do this. Yeah, I, I'm not, I won't give it to you, Dale. Like, that's yeah. not a day one graphic, right, for sure. Right, right, right. <laughs> How did Sanchez end up with, with that one? I don't know. Yeah. Luck of the draw? Yeah, it seemed like, you know, some writers definitely got, like, shit on for graphics. Like, I don't know. Because, you know, Henry... Was there any dude, like, just, just give him that one? Uh, it seemed like Jordan Richter maybe got a few of those. Yeah. And then, like, I think the way he may have looked at it was, like, he was the one vert rider on blind. So he's like, well, of course, you're going to, yeah, you're <laughs> going to get. And then uh, I had also, like, given a lot of random graphics to Randy Colvin. And mm -hmm. then our rationale for that for that was, well, he's way out in Arizona. Like, how is, you know, we can't 
we could fax it to him, I guess. I don't know. Right. right. How would you? Yeah. yeah. One other cease oh, and yeah. desist that, that came up um, was uh, we had done a graphic that was, this is like in the Devilman era, but it was like Devilman driving a bomber uh, fighter fire, fighter plane. Okay. And uh, so in World War, World War II, they had a... <laughs> These uh, this nose art and they, you know, pictures of like you know chicks on the side of the nose for to boost morale for the, the soldiers and the, oh. the pilots, and there was one that I found in an old book that said Hell's Angels, so it had like a, a devil girl which was already like a world character mm. and it said Hell's Angels, so I'm like oh we'll do that as a board. Oh yeah, and we got a. a we got contacted by the Hells Angels, the motorcycle gang. Oh, whoa. <laughs> yeah. that's a letter you don't want to get. Yeah, yeah. and we're yeah. we're trying to explain. Um, maybe somebody in our management said like, "Well, what about the uh, World War II fighter pilot, uh, you know, group, the Hells Angels?" And they're like, "How how do you think the uh, who who do you think started the motorcycle gang afterwards?" Wow, <laughs> damn. So they own the trademark to that. So generally, like their um, way of doing things is they would make you pay like ten grand to their charity of choice or something like oh, that. Oh wow, so that's oh. what we did. Oh okay. I thought maybe they would visit you. Yeah. <laughs> 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 and handle who, it. Who drew it? Handle it man to man. There was there was a coin toss though. I read an interview with our CFO um, recently. Well, maybe four or five years ago. That was the CFO of World at the time. And between him and Rocco, they flipped a coin to see who would have to go see the Hell's Angels lawyers. And Steve oh. won the coin toss. So no way. This other guy Scott had to go see them. You ever see Rocco these days? Is he? Do you ever talk to him? I haven't really? seen him like in the past two years. No. Hmm. Would you like to? Yeah, but it seemed, seemed like you guys had a good time back then. Yeah, you know, I'm sure I mean, we'll guys... cross paths again. Yeah, right. I mean, we had a lot of um, crazy times together. Like when he was uh, had his uh, his compound in Hawaii on the island of Lanai. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Wow. He bought this like like World had a few times where it was sold, and this was after this is like around 1997, the same time the the Big Brother deal went down. That was when we were using that accounting firm, and then this company called Swander Pace Capital from San Francisco or something, I think they basically bought like 70% of World Industries. Oh, wow. So Steve and Rodney still own part of it. But then then they had to go up to these meetings, I think, in the Bay Area. to, And that was when the whole commercial of, of work, commercialization of World went down because this, these investors were like, you know, you want we, want, profit. Yeah. Yeah, we want you yeah. to be having, having this broad distribution and stuff. Wow. But then Steve was all good with it because then, then he bought this like crazy 6,000 square foot house in Lanai on the island of Lanai in Hawaii. And we go out there with a team. And, uh, I mean, yeah. you called it a compound. Is it, it, is it was it? it was one house. Yeah, but I mean, maybe compound in the sense that he had like all these toys there, like he had all these quad runners. Oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> and then like the way that he rigged up the the quads was like, of course we didn't use helmets. But we had these uh, uh, aviator headsets with with mics. No way. So you talk and, to one another. Yeah, you could talk to each other, and then when you when you weren't talking to to each other, then it would go back to the Walkman, so you could listen to the radio and have music playing. That's <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Kind of like Kelly's little button over there. I, I, <laughs> push the top. No, that's amazing. Yeah, Sluggo uh, rolled one of Rocco's Land Rovers while he was out there. Oh, oh wow! Because yeah. Rocco started um, a rental car, rental car agency when he was on the island. Because he got to the island and he's like, "Fuck, the only rental cars you can get out here are Jeeps." Oh. And he wanted he wanted uh, Land Rovers, so he bought a bunch of Land Rovers and started his own rental car, car company called Red Rover. Is he still Jeez. doing it? No, that didn't last very long. <laughs> they had yeah. to. They would constantly be having like. You get out the winch and tow people from being stuck off oh, the side of the roads because yeah. it's all dirt roads like on the mountainous terrain out there. Do what, do a lot of people live on that little island or was it No, it used desolate? to be, I think it's all, the population is all just pretty much employed by the hospitality in, industry out there. Like there's two hotels. Oh. Um, it used to be a pineapple plantation, but I think that probably stopped like in the 70s or something. Oh, and then wow. they built like two big hotels. So at first Rocco would like, before Rocco had his house there, he would fly the team out to the island and put us all up in the fucking hotel rooms. <laughs> <laughs> like one time uh, to shoot the ad campaign for Duff's Shoes. Um, he's like, yeah, we can get all the ads shot in one week. So he had all the riders that were gonna be in all like the six or seven ads. And then, you know, they did a photo shoot a day. Um, you know, for Duff shoes. Wow. Were they filming? Were they the commercials for that too at that time? There were some that were yeah. four and one that were like girls running around with like little bunny. Well, they that? had the bunnies that are like on Easter Island yeah. and shooting them. Yeah, and they also had the like the uh, the Nazi one. I don't know where those were filmed. Well, the Nazi one I think was filmed in inside the World Industries warehouse. Right. Hmm. And I think Stacy Peralta might have had part of that. Oh, really? Didn't, had a part in that? Direct him? Yeah, I think so. Must be nice, huh? Rocco, huh? Island house. 
yeah, and, and he would like helmets uh, with walkie talkies in it. I think he in the Man Who Sold the World documentary. He's mm-hmm. like he. I think Steve says, yeah. At that point, I was pretty much footloose and fancy free. <laughs> wow. <laughs> I bet. I bet. Do we know how much he sold World for? Do we do? Um, to Globe, I think it was forty three million. Wow. Forty three million. <laughs> and th- and this was what year? Two thousand two. Like, Wet Willie, dude. Wet Willie and Flame Boy. We need to start doing some shit like that <laughs> yeah. over here at the Nine Club, dude. Just we're changing up everything. Let's create a character. What character could we? What, what would be a good character for our show? We could do Flame Crab. <laughs> <laughs> Flame Crab and uh, and Wet Raj. Yeah, Wet Raj. <laughs> <laughs> what am I, dude? You're Flame Boy. Yeah, you're the, yeah you're Flame Boy. What? Oh yeah, I brought um. Some original Big Brothers. Oh, you did? The ones I had doubles of. Uh, oh, okay. Some of the singles, like, I yeah, don't, no, don't want to yeah. let go just yet. Yeah, hold on. Sure. But these are yours. Oh, wow. Oh, oh. oh. yeah. Gifts. Man. He's got them in a big bag. A double bag. Wow. Oh, we got Earl. Wow. Look at this, huh? Oh, this is the, uh, oh, how, to, how to make a fake ID. What? Kelly, you, you I need that. Yeah, you need that. How to for make whatever idea. reason. For whatever reason, yeah. When you guys started Big Brother, was it they obviously wanted to do a different size mag every, yeah. each and every time, like yeah, Steve, different and Jeff Tremaine for sure wanted to do that. At what point were you like, "This is insane. What are we doing? Let's just stick to one size." Yeah, probably within this run of magazines that it kind of like went back to like a standard format. I could imagine trying to change up the thing every issue would be yeah. a nightmare. Because you have to know, oh, we're going to do this spiral bound magazine, horizontal, you know what I mean? Like, how did you, how would you prepare for stuff like that? The program was called Quark Express. So okay. you're, you're working with a computer. It's pretty easy just to change your, you know, page size. Okay. There was like some difficult things with printing though, because sometimes we'd, because like when they print the magazine, they'd print it on sheets of paper that are like, you know, almost four feet by four feet. Oh. So it's like 16 of the pages are on one side and then they cut it up somehow when, okay. they, when they bind it or something. So you'd have some, sometimes you'd have to do a layout where like, you know, half of the things are upside down, but they're all on the same print, yeah, printer see. spread or something they're called. It's confusing, right? Yeah, that was confusing. Kelly. What, dude? <laughs> this is the issue that has Richard Mulder's foundation ad Oh, no way. And then in the back, him, oh, him, oh, him, leaving. him leaving. No way, dude. <laughs> this That's amazing. I mean, Mark, you, you, you've you been a part of some awesome shit, bro. You know what I mean? Like some histor- historic, iconic stuff in skateboarding. Skateboarding was so sick back then. I mean, still sick, dude, but like... Good God, look at that. Like, that, that Sassy for pe- skateboarders. People are, like, afraid of shit now. You know what I mean? What issue was a Daniel Castillo cover? It was a big magazine with the... Oh, uh, issue two. That was yeah. issue two? Yeah. How did that issue do? That's why Ternaski wanted out of the company, because, like... Because uh, of for, Daniel's face? No, no, because... <laughs> <laughs> it, it didn't do, it didn't do it so didn't well. Do because uh, the first issue, I think we printed 20,000 copies. So then Ternaski put up some money. He's like, Let, let's print 40,000 copies. So I got... I, the only reason why I didn't bring that issue over is it's so big. It's big, yeah. Um, but I got I got a stack of those. When you were going into each article, was it just like whatever happens happens, or do you have like a vision for the article going in? Yeah, were you guys planning things out? Yeah, we would have yeah content meetings that, at the beginning of each like you know when when issue was off at the printer, we'd try to figure out like what we were gonna do for the next issue. Mm-hmm. But that would just only be like a list of things to do. Just throwing shit at the board. And yeah, what I it. what I found worked a lot better though afterwards with interviews is to write the interview questions uh, down ahead of time. Mm-hmm. Because then you would have it there on paper and you'd have the nerve to like just read it even though it was like completely random and yeah. you know probably a question that they wouldn't want to be asked necessarily. Yeah. So that, that was a thing that we did. You would think that Ternaski would know like what he's getting himself into. You know what I mean? Like dealing with yeah, Rocco but, and this whole other magazine, you know? But actually like things that had worked up to that point st- mm-hmm. really stopped working. And like even the gnarly graphics, I stopped doing the really like, mm-hmm. you know, provocative gnarly graphics like in the early 90s because the shops there was a bunch of new companies like it, when when world first started there weren't re, re, there wasn't really that many new companies or smaller mm-hmm. companies then like you know there was like new deal and all these other right. companies that had options for shops to buy their boards so it's like uh, i don't think we're gonna buy like the satanic board from world industries or like the naked yeah. uh, corpse or something so then 
Big Brother was kind of an outlet to do more provocative, like gnarly shit, because mm-hmm. the graphics got really um, just more like logo ripoff oriented at yeah. that point. It hadn't been tough, like we all the crazy shit you guys were doing for Big Brother, or whatever, just trying to get advertisers to like want to be in the mag. Yeah, they're like, um, I don't know if we want to be in there. You know? Yeah, well, at first, um, like an incentive was like we would lay out their ads for them. Oh, really? Yeah, and that would be actually like, a good question for Cossack because he was like our ad coordinator. Like he would actually try to like get the ads, like get people to buy the ads. Mm-hmm. But then we'd have like people from companies that like, you know, they could be like companies that maybe might maybe don't even have like a computer or something, and then we'd lay out the whole ad for them in the office and oh, like wow. charge them an hourly rate. Oh, wow. I think there's there's one issue where uh, Rocco offered to give Think a free ad and thinking that think would keep advertising with us so okay. their ad was like the think ad said rocco gave us this ad for free and then they never advertised with us ever again that was it. <laughs> yeah. That's genius. Yeah. 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 i love it man i wish we could go back in time to this era what were like you know? the other magazines saying going or, or did you hear any commotion about like what thrasher or like trans world was saying about what you guys were doing with big brother any beef i had heard that jake phelps forbid anyone from bringing a, bringing a big brother into thrasher would you guys try to like do like make fun of stuff that th- those guys were doing too yeah i think we did that like there's maybe like a, a thing parodying their scarfing material article where they had like recipes um in thrasher what do you mean they had recipes oh yeah yeah the old thrasher For what um, Chana masala rick blackheart uh had a <laughs> maybe <laughs> <laughs> He had an article called Scarfing Material in Thrasher where he'd like, you know, show you how to cook with like spaghetti and meatballs or something okay. like that. Okay. And what did you guys, like, what did you guys do? Chef Pierre. Uh, it's a little embarrassing cuz it's like it's kind of cheesy. But So, this is our version of a scarfing material. Okay. Oh, you even called it scarfing material. Yeah, and this girl who was a stripper <laughs> that we met on the Hustler field trip, she wanted to be become a contributor to the magazine. To the oh. magazine, so she wanted to have a recipe in there and for banana bread. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> 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 ingredients: two laughing eyes, two loving arms, two well-shaped legs, <laughs> two firm milk containers, one fur lined mix bowl, one very large banana, one very large banana, <laughs> two large, two large nuts. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you guys must have been having a blast. Yeah, I just want to show you one more thing in this Go thing. Ahead. That's Jenna Jameson. Oh, really? Oh, no yeah, we met her on a trip to Las Vegas. No this, way. Uh, she I was really bummed because I got her name wrong in the in the, um, in the masthead. Oh, oh yeah. you did? <laughs> but yeah, we, we met Jenna, Jenna Jameson. Where, on where was this? Uh, it looks like it's somebody's house. Yeah, though. it was at this house of this famous like showgirl. Her name was Venus Delight. <laughs> 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 and she was like a famous older stripper in Las Vegas, had its big mansion, and she had all these like exotic animals, like a cockatoo and like a, maybe a monkey or something. <laughs> <laughs> and did you know this was the Jenna James? Did you know that? No, no. I, I wrote Jenna Jemison. I didn't even know what, how, what her name was. She wasn't like, she was just performing at Crazy Horse at the time. She wasn't in porno. She or wasn't. A, oh, okay. Oh, gotcha. Wow. Right. Gabriel Rodriguez. What is that? Fakey nose grind? How many weird situations did Big Brother put you in? Uh, <laughs> well, I would say most weird situations were related to Big Brother for sure, yeah. yeah. Well, thank you so much for these. Yeah, like, man. That's amazing, yeah, that's incredible. Dude. Yeah. And thank you so much for the, all the new boards for our walls. <laughs> yeah. Thank you so much. It's incredible. We'll take care of them. <laughs> Do anything else we need? Should we cover, Mark, while we're, while we're uh, in the flow? I don't know. I, I'm a little uncomfortable being on camera anyway, so maybe we should just wrap it up. No, seriously, dude, this has been incredible. Yeah, it's been great. Know. Like, seriously, dude, thank you so much for coming yeah, by. Thank you for the mags, everything. And thank you for all your amazing artwork over the years yes. and stuff and your contributions to skateboarding, and it's it's incredible, dude. Well, thanks. <laughs> <laughs> dude, Mark McKee. Thank you so much, bro. Don't we have some artwork on a mug we can give him or something like that? Kelly, will you go grab (laughs) a... uh, Go grab Mark some some stuff, would you please, bro? Do you mind? Yeah, large. Large? Yeah, this has been incredible, dude. Thank you, Kelly, bro. Thank you so much, bro. Appreciate that. We got a... Artwork for you. It's kind of dusty. Was that the Mark Apple, Appleyard? This is a Mark Appleyard drawing of uh, me and Raj there. Dope. Nine Club for you. Do you drink coffee? Yep. Yep. There you go. And uh, look at that. New Era Nine Club snapback hat for you. Sick. Right there. And uh, of course, the Nine Club t shirt 
for you, bro. Awesome. Size large. Hey, dude, thank you so much, Mark, yeah. for coming by. Thank you for the magazines and everything, dude. Thanks for Ubering a block over. <laughs> <laughs> Do you need to Uber back? Okay, let me think about that, because it might be a little bit lighter without the magazines. It might be a little <laughs>